In the story of Gideon that we've been talking about, the angel of the Lord comes to him and calls him a mighty man of valor, which Gideon immediately resists. Right? Immediately he is like, who are you talking to? Do you not know the situation that we're in? That's exactly what I'm talking about, reminding everyone to grab hold of the very first thing you sense because our minds are not used to this and we're very quick to talk ourselves out of it and not believe it. When we're praying and listening to God, whatever God says to us takes faith to believe. Right. You're a mighty man of valor and Gideon saying, no, I'm not. And then he lists the facts as he understands that prove that he's not a mighty man right. of valor. So it takes faith for him to believe what, what the angel of the Lord says about him, but it takes no faith for him to believe what he has learned about himself from the world, which is, I'm the least, I'm the weak one, I'm the cowardly one, as evidenced by the size of my tribe and my own, I'm hiding in a cave. How can I be what you say when my life experience is that of a coward. So the evidence in his world doesn't match up with what the angel of the Lord is saying to him. And so now we have the challenge of who is he gonna believe? Who are we going to believe? And I find it interesting that he's not asking, I mean, they're crying out to the Lord for deliverance, but Gideon's not sitting around saying, God, who am I? What's right. my identity? And so sometimes we do have focus times of listening to God, asking Him to speak into our identities. But then sometimes it's just this Kairos moment right. where God is present and speaking to you when you weren't looking for it. And it demonstrates what we've been saying that God is not separate. Even when the people feel separated from God, God is not separate from them. That's God right. is right there. He's naming us. He's talking to us, we may not be listening, we may be overcome by our fear, which shuts down our ability to receive. That's why we need to calm ourselves and, and breathe and begin to receive from God. And th this is the challenge for Gideon is, the angel of the Lord is there speaking identity into him. He's battling it. He's battling it in his spirit, so to speak. And then he has the option whether he's gonna receive the truth of who he is and how that affects what we'll see as his relationship with us. Right, the choice factor. We always right. have a choice. Let's walk through that critical identity piece because being informs doing, right? And, it, and the true me, what God has created me to be, will not walk in fear. We're prone to joy and joyful relationship. So get comfortable wherever you are take three or four sips of water and just do some steady, deep breathing and just focus on that breathing. And remember, just do it real steady and even as you inhale, it's that word Yah. And as you exhale, it's the word Way, Yahweh, the unsayable name of God, the beautiful name. And just a little interesting fact as you're breathing, as you're thinking about all your limbs, just relaxing. The Yah part of Yahweh, the inhale, is a feminine part of the word. And the feminine is always receiving like you are when you're inhaling, receiving the healing oxygen, the cleansing oxygen. And when you exhale, that's the masculine part of the word, the ability to initiate. And so we're receiving, God's creating new things in us, and then we're exhaling, we're initiating. All people are made in the image of God who is both masculine and feminine in virtue. So just breathe for a few minutes thinking about that. God, thank you for how you spoke to Gideon, how you disrupted the systems that the Israelites had created for themselves, the systems of settling, settling and rationalizing and ruminating about the things they're afraid of. 
Gideon wasn't born a victim of circumstances. That's what the enemy wants us to believe. But you always provide a different way. And so let's get back to the roots of our beliefs and how you created us to be. When we think of childhood memories, that's because it's the origins of your belief systems. And then that's the lens through which you see yourself and God and the world. So I want you to think of a joyful childhood memory. Joyful, peaceful, content, not necessarily super happy, but it could be happy. Maybe it's a memory of camping and you're in nature and you just feel so peaceful. Or maybe it's a Christmas morning and you're opening that present that you were so happy to get. And it was a big surprise. A joyful, peaceful, content memory. And I want you to really enter into it like you're in the memory, not looking back and see what other people are there. Notice your surroundings. What does it smell like? What's touching your skin? Are you sitting? Is there a breeze? Is there a fire? What does it feel like? Maybe you're enjoying a meal. Remember the taste. Just really enter into the memory and try to name all the feelings that you're feeling. If there's other people, what are they saying that contributes to that peaceful, joyful, content feeling? If you're by yourself, what's around you that's contributing to that feeling? Name the feelings. The presence of perfect, divine, unconditional love is right there with you. How is the divine presence of love manifesting itself in your memory? Just let Jesus represent himself any way he wants to. Part of your identity, your true identity, that timeless essence of who you really are that's eternal, that's at your core, was being called out in this memory. As you connect with the presence of perfect unconditional love and the other things surrounding you in this memory, make an I am statement. What's your identity. What's the formation of your identity here? I am. What's the first thing you sense? And then ask divine love. What else do you want me to know about that? How do you see me in this moment in that identity? Take some time now before you get on with your day or your evening and write down what you're sensing. Remember these moments. These are the moments that literally transform our lives.